Okay, we this group uh, try to find some input from the participants as to how an open access policy can be formulated. And uh, a number of issues has been raised. I don't know how I can do it precisely. Yet I will, be, I will be giving you uh, major issues raised from the uh, discussants uh, in terms of uh, individuals' uh, perspectives. Number one, about users. So in this group, users has been uh, understood in terms of uh, students, researchers, and teachers or lecturers. So what input can be found from these users? Uh, one of the issues that the OA policy should put into its policy development as uh, an aspect of fulfilling these requirements is uh, the issue of competences. So uh, the level of education, the copyright issues, the um, rules, the rules and regulations, and the three S, the issue of authentication, accountability, and uh, the third A is uh, authorization. authorization. And uh, also the issue of privacy, uh, the issue of uh, security, and uh, the issue of skills should be surveyed in detail, should be f approximated and well discussed while formulating QA policy. So as part of the librarians, the issue mainly is focusing about managing information. So the issue of management of library while uh, developing the OA policy uh, should be taken into account about the awareness of these uh, librarians, the management skill, the digital skill, and related knowledge management aspect. Almost the discussants in this group uh, proudly felt that this is purely a center where users are supposed to exploit highly and the policy should be discussing it in detail as to how to find additional inputs from the librarians. <coughs> so when we go to the IT staffs, so participants from the IT staffs mainly are raising issues of software related, standardization related and license related aspects of the softwares. So I hope while you are developing the OA policy, you will be taking into account the input from this discussant. The university management managers, we have felt that these are uh, stakeholders that the OA policy should consider and the policy should be at least trying to say something about resource allocation, material provision, training related elements, and uh, more of the managers, the university managers should be more of role players in formulation of institutional policies by developing their own OA policies, by having a guideline and tool of managing OA as to the need of their institutions. So I think while you are there to develop, make sure that these managers should feel that they are part of the policy and the policy from these managers should be mainly of entertaining the resources, infrastructures, financial allocations, and uh, guidelines and tools like that. What about the final participants, which we call them researchers? They are researchers.
So from researchers' point of view, what did we find from our discussion? We found the issue of honesty, the issue of security again, the issue of research finding, the issue of trustworthiness, the issue of openness, issue of incentives, a quite number of issues has been raised. Hopefully, while you are developing or a policy, these researchers will be felt confident to either use or manipulate or contribute to the uh, site you are developing. I think these are some of the points raised by this group members. If something that you can add, you are welcome. If not, this is all about uh, my, our discussion. Much. Thank sir. you very much. My name is Aftamu from Group 2. Uh, I'm working at ICT Directorate Teaching Learning Technology Team Leader. Uh, now I'm one of the representatives of Group 2, and every issue that I have been uh, raising here uh, represents the overall group uh, members, not mine. So this is the stand of our group, and our motto is that uh, close your windows to open sources. This is our motto of uh, the motto of our group. That means uh, everybody should focus upon the open source technologies that can enhance our overall uh, teaching learning technologies. That is what uh, the intention of our groups. And the main uh, point that I am going to raise here is regarding the technical readiness to uptake the NADRI uh, services here uh, at the university level as well as at the national level. So. Uh, the, there are, I think, five uh, issues that were raised by the team uh, members here uh, uh, regarding the uh, readiness of uh, the members. Every members are ready to cope up with the technology that has been uh, coming from the NADRE services because uh, most of us are somehow familiar with the technology that has been uh, uh, enhancing our uh, teaching learning technologies. Uh, including our uh, professors. So here, uh, there are some kind of needs that should be uh, incorporated while we are designing this kind of uh, uh, needs regarding this implementation of uh, such NADRE services. So here, our members have raised uh, five basic uh, needs that should be uh, taken into consideration. The first one is regarding the ICT uh, service infrastructure because uh, to, uh, in the uh, context of Dilla University, as well as some of uh, the government universities, they lack some kind of uh, uh, better speed uh, regarding the internet service or connectivity. So, from that point of view, there has to be uh, a better speed internet service, uh, which uh, should uh, accompany with the uh, standardized level of the network connectivity, because here in the Dilla uh, context, uh, this campus is somehow flat network, which is not easily manageable by the network admin as well as by the service provider. So that has, uh, that has to be considered. The second one is, uh, in order to uh, uh, provide the service of these NADRE services, particularly the MOOC uh, or uh, modular open uh, 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 courses uh, facility, there has to be the connectivity among the classes or the smart rooms. Currently, we have implemented the, uh, some of the uh, smart rooms, but uh, unfortunately, they uh, come back to the former uh, status due to the uh, maintenance of the building. So every, at a national level, every university and the public and institution should consider that connectivity of those smart rooms in order to outreach the service of these NADRE uh, services. The other thing is there has to be, again, uh, uninterruptible power supply. You know, uh, starting from the early morning, we have been suffering from the shortage of the power supply. So in the middle of the, uh, the service provision, those systems or those services should not be interrupted. It has to provide at least a maximum of 724 uh, services. So. Uh, that should also be uh, uh, taken into account. The other thing is well-established multimedia center. Uh, we have implemented the uh, MOOC or the modular uh, course objective, I mean uh, open source uh, 
uh, course uh, service delivery, but we have faced some problems from the resource uh, availability. For example, if we urge instructors or teachers to uh, develop or to produce the PowerPoint or multimedia uh, resources, they, that is difficult for them because there is no multimedia center that provides all those resources for their uh, students or for their learners. So every uh, public university as well as every uh, institution should consider those multimedia centers in order to provide accurate, appropriate, outdated and uh, valid uh, contents for those NADRI services. The other problem or the other uh, uh, technical needs that should be addressed is there has to be continuous follow-up of uh, the services itself because most of the time uh, it is uh, discussed with the uh, team members that there is a loose control of those uh, service providers, including the previous organizations that they can uh, provide services for a conditional, not uh, it can be the based upon the interest or the uh, tests of the uh, higher education or the government itself, but that should not be uh, continue with this situation. So there has to be a close control toward this to the NADRE uh, services, as well as there has to be consistent, despite of being political, distance, uh, despite of uh, being uh, conditional. There has to be consistent uh, follow-up. The other thing is from the human capital point of view again that should be addressed. What the first one is there has to be better management system. For example we have been providing some services like uh, module or e-learning systems by using other open sources or a learning management system or content management system but they have stopped due to different uh, reasons. For example if the management uh, is ever changing, then the overall uh, capacity of that institution to address those or to implement those services will be lowered. So those should be uh, taken into account based upon the national level, based upon the Ministry of Education, or it can be based upon the level of higher education. The other thing is there has to be, again, continuous awareness creation. There has to be a medium that aware the user as well as the overall community starting from the top level managerial point to the uh, lower level users. So there has to be awareness creation. Another thing is there has to be again periodical capacity building training. It can be on job training, it can be uh, based upon the short term training, or it can be in the long term training. The, uh, every participant or every community uh, should be well trained in order to uh, use those services. The other thing uh, should be considered is there has to be strong collaboration among the companies or there has to be strong relationship among the industry and institution linkages. If there is a loose industry linkage to, to, together with the institution, that is difficult to address the uh, NADRE services. The other thing is the institution should allocate a sufficient amount of budget in order to launch that uh, services. For example, if uh, the NADRE or if the Ministry of Education wants to uh, implement this NADRE services, there has to be a huge amount of budget allocation regarding to the purchase of the services, regarding to the purchase of SUH routers or any other infrastructure that enables the uh, systems uh, to be deployed. So that is again uh, another issue that is raised by our team. The other thing is for service activation. As my colleague uh, stated uh, earlier, that this service activation, as well as the uh, migration and the upgrade of the system, it demands a huge amount of budget, as well as different infrastructure. So that should also be addressed. Uh, the last but not the least is that uh, there has to be again approved ICT policy. For your uh, surprise, uh, there is no uh, institutional ICT based uh, ICT approved ICT policy. Uh, regarding the, uh, uh, the frequency of the uh, service usage, regarding the access time when that, that uh, intended uh, user can use that service. So all those issues should be uh, taken into account. So this is some of the basic issues that are raised by uh, team members. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. My name is Amrash Kabrasalase from ICT Directorate. The question that was given for us for discussion is uh, readiness, availability of experts, and 
Nate. Uh, before our discussion, uh, this uh, uh, question leads me, takes me uh, 15 years back uh, in my, for my experience in working uh, at the library. Uh, at that time, uh, uh, the library was, uh, 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 was working manually. And uh, uh, in order to change that manual system, that means uh, searching book system. Uh, there was one uh, system uh, created by one of the staff, I think. Uh, and Dana may help me uh, if I miss the point. So uh, in order to uh, digitize this manual system uh, for searching uh, books, that is accession uh, system, uh, in order to uh, give a training for staff. Uh, there was uh, only one computer. Uh, the staffs were about uh, 50. Uh, and uh, uh, the trainer also one. There was one computer, as I said, one trainer and 50 staffs. You see uh, how uh, the, uh, the staff will suffer to uh, give uh, to attend or to uh, have the training. So after uh, this time, this time onwards, the university worked hard to change uh, this system or to overcome the uh, manual system to digitize. Uh, nowadays, there are, uh, I think, about two or three uh, rooms with uh, plenty of computer to uh, uh, for for a digital uh, uh, as a digital reading room or uh, for digital e-learning e system so this shows how uh, the university uh, is ready to accept such type of uh, technology or system so uh, I hope the university is uh, delighted to accept uh, this uh, technology or system. And the other point is the availability of experts uh, uh, regarding the uh, former uh, presenter. Uh, there, there is uh, 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 plenty of staffs to, uh, for, for uh, manipulating the system. In ICT, there are about uh, four uh, uh, departments uh, in different uh, quality. So these staffs uh, can manage uh, the system. I hope they do it. As uh, a staff of uh, ICT, I, I, I can uh, ensure this. And the other thing is the need. Uh, in the morning uh, session, the coordinators wa was uh, discussing, uh, they uh, I think they uh, 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 provided the training only for 70 people, but uh, about 90 or above uh, people came for the, t the training. So this shows how much the need is there. So uh, if the, uh, uh, the technology or the system works as it was presented in the morning, uh, definitely there is a high demand or need for the technology. Thank you. We discussed on uh, these points, which is the role of universities, Ethernet, and Minister of Agric Education in uh, Nardi, Nadri. I think there is a problem of NDA. Well, correct. Okay. Uh, uh, as we have discussed, there are the uh, list of role of universities. Uh, the first one is uh, transferring quality education is the most important thing. Then the, uh, delivering whether uh, training, that which may be short training or long training, based on the data uh, usage. And the other one is updating the workers as well as the resources timely. That means uh, on the level of university. And this may also uh, continue to that of Ethernet. Fulfilling the infrastructure at the university level, that which may be used for uh, to collect the 
data because the place where the main source for data storage is our collection is uh, maybe universities. The other one is creating awareness about the access to data usage for the workers, for the users as well as also. And uh, prepare quality controlling mechanism, how to collect only useful data. So if you simply collect data which are not improper, which are not used uh, properly, and which are not useful uh, references, it should not be stored and uh, take space. So uh, there should be quality controlling mechanism to upload only useful data. The other one is there should be collecting mechanism, organizing, and lastly, uploading useful data on uh, this. At this time, there should be a screening mechanism that only uh, objectively on uh, useful uh, data. The other one is producing the conducive environment that should be, uh, maybe, maybe uh, for training uh, and also development. So there should be environment. Uh, all are, should feel good to upload their data. They should be willing. So uh, this should be at university level. The other one is role of uh, internet, uh, as it is shown here. There should, uh, this sh the, at internet level, there should be a set of enough space f to hold all data that which are transferred from universities. And also to pre prevent the loss of data, there should be backup systems that may be developed at the Ethernet level. The other one is there should be securing data mechanism. Data should be secured at Ethernet level because it is stored at mainly at Ethernet level. Uh, the other one is updating and adding new resources timely based on. The, that means resources should be updated. Uh, new resources should be added timely. And linking Ethernet with the private company, all publishing journals, as well as the others. This may be useful uh, not only for uh, uh, publication, it's also used as resource uh, or financial uh, uh, gaining mechanism. The other one is uh, offline accessibility should be prepared or there should be the way we can get offline uh, without getting, uh, with, uh, if the, even if there is no internet. So how it is, it may be feature uh, work. The other one is providing technical training uh, timely, uh, which may be planned also uh, for uh, the users as well as the workers as well as uh, resource which may develop the resource. It may be for uh, universities also. The other one is language media by which the data is published should be respected. That means uh, if one published by uh, the whatever kind of the language, data should be stored on Ethernet level. And lastly, the role of universities, what the uh, role of Ministry of Education as our perspective, but it may be greater than this. There should be uh, sustainable financial resources that which may support the Ethernet workers as well as at university levels. And the other one, is should, there should be, uh, they should prepare all infrastructures that which may facilitate this. It may be starting from Ministry of Education up to the university level. And uh, th there should digitalize the technical learning materials, not only the uh, text, also textbooks uh, should be digitalized and easily accessible to the uh, users. And the other one, they should coordinate, monitor, and lastly report the, dat the level of data storage and the users. It may be yearly report or twice yearly report. They should prepare. Uh, it looks like this. Thank you.